Hey everyone, welcome to The Withering Effect, episode 142. Today's date is May 1st, 2022, and I am Duds, or Duds Versus, known to the rest of the interwebs. And I'm Jimbo, you may know me as Jimbo Slice 23 So what have you been up to this week, Duds? Creative block. <laughs> I actually spent half my week working on a villager trading hall. For people who don't keep up with the YouTube channel, I don't do a lot of building in creative mode. And then just rebuilding it on Ripple Effect. Basically, everything you see in Ripple Effect was built there first. Mm -hmm. I'm very much a survival builder. And that takes longer <laughs> than it really needs to. Especially if you got to tear it down because you didn't like it. <laughs> yes. So I spent three days working on a wall. For this villager trading hall. And really it wasn't the wall. It was the roof line. Roof lines lately seem to be my nemesis. Mm. Which is rough. <laughs> yeah. But I couldn't get the roof line to look the way I wanted. And then I was looking at the building. And I was like well this is just kind of a box. So I trashed it. And I ripped it down. I was like whatever. So I was trying to figure out what else to do for the rest of the episode. Because I had already done my nether tunnel and stuff. And I actually really enjoyed how the nether tunnel came out. I actually went back last night at like, I don't know, 11.30 last night to uh, add some more details. Oh, okay. Yeah, I liked how that came out. So I just kept doing little detail works. Adding different bit of terrain over here. Adding some shrubbery and uh, light blocks to add hidden lighting over there. And then I had an idea for this really like decrepit tower on the other side of my what will be my new storage room because i needed a way to get up and down like its main way in is just to fly in which is all good and stuff until you die yeah so you don't have <laughs> wings right so i was like you know what i need a way up and down i need a tower that can reach both levels so i built this really like, decrepit tower it looks like Giant chunks are missing, and people were just too lazy to refill the chunks, so they put fence posts in its place, and mm. I thought it looked pretty good, and then I, I went to do the roof, <laughs> which scared the living crap out of me, because I just said I, <laughs> I spent three days on a roof line and tore it down, and that was it. And I ended up doing this cone-shaped roof, and it's the first time I made a cone-shaped roof without a picture or something to let me know how to do it like the little tower on side my house that cone shaped tower the cone itself was a cone i had seen in a different image i just changed the palette and a couple blocks to make it work for what i was doing so now i'm building a cone roof from scratch not looking at anything and i was kind of worried and also it had to be decrepit at the same time so i i, I built out a very a very symmetrical shaped roof went around and placed stairs and slabs in weird place so it kind of looks like it's leaning a little bit to the left if you look at it just right mm. I, I was super happy with it it gave me a little bit more oomph like okay you know what you haven't lost all your creative abilities <laughs> Let, let's do some more stuff just some just some <laughs> <laughs> exactly i ended up throwing together like one of the smallest pumpkin farms I've ever made. I think it only has 15 pumpkin stems, but it, it's working. I said I was going to make one for a while. I don't need a ton of pumpkins. They're quite literally just there to trade with some villagers. Nah, I was just going to say that. So I don't need pumpkins overflowing, and when they do overflow, they're just going to give me more bone meal. So I'm not going to complain about that. Right. It's a good idea. Yeah. That's kind of how I spent my week. I'm excited for next week. Next week... I'm planning on working inside the new storage room and getting that figured out. I've got two or three double chests of stuff that's now overflowing. Ooh. And it's like, okay, I, I'm going to go ahead and throw these in shulker boxes for now, but I kind of need a spot to store stuff. Yeah, that's kind of my week. How about you? That's where the storage room comes in to store things. I've had a pretty long week. Uh, before I start that, I you, you mentioned using the fence posts in your build, and that reminds me of like rebar, you know, through the concrete. Yes. It's a pretty clever idea, and I was thinking maybe what iron bars might look like rebar in that situation. I thought about iron bars, mm -hmm. and the thing, when they start connecting, it didn't look good. It looked like a fence. Okay. 
if we could make them not connect. Like I even tried doing iron bar fence post, iron bar fence post, so they wouldn't connect. And it, it just didn't look as good with the uniformity of the fence post. Like the fence post connects horizontally, but it's such a small connection compared to the vertical connection that you don't really notice it. Okay. Yeah, I figured I'd ask about that because I didn't notice when I saw your build with the fence post in there. That's like the biggest detailed part of the build. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even notice. I think I looked real quick when I stopped over. It's in your episode too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I must have missed that. Yeah, Thursday night, uh, I was sitting there and I had the platform laid out. Like I knew the shape of the platform and I had this staircase in the middle. That's all I had. And I said, by the end of the night, I want this built, the video edited, rendered, and uploaded so it'll go out on a Friday. Because mm. I didn't want to have to wait an entire weekend again to post a video. <laughs> Thursday night was a late night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was also able to push a video out. Mm-hmm. I d- did a little bit of a replay mod, you know, with the storyline. You know, Jimbo meets Steve. Steve's kind of in another dimension. He's telling Jimbo or my character what's going on. And uh, I'm trying to build heaven at the moment. And uh, that storyline continues a little bit, but I don't get to build heaven just yet. I do a lot of interior on my cave base. Now, when I made this cave base, I made it like a lush interior where my uh, enchanting setup is. Below it, it's kind of different mm-hmm. down below. But I also wanted to make a bedroom and a memorial room, you know, a place to put the heads that I've gotten and... uh you know, a decent place to sleep. And it's just been sitting there for pretty much all season because this was the first build that I started on and I haven't touched it since. If my mind gets going and I start doing other things, you kind of leave things behind. So I went back and I pretty much finished everything. Yeah. Now, I don't really have to worry about any of those areas anymore. I can actually focus on the outside of my base, which I need to do a lot more landscaping and, uh, you know, of course, I got to build heaven, which is a pretty big project. But besides that, I uh been working on a tutorial. Uh, earlier in the season, I made a record farm mm-hmm. from the creepers, and uh, haven't seen that on any tutorial tutorials tutorial. So I want to make my own. You know, try to put that out there. See how that does. What's your favorite kind of cereal? Tutorials. Tutorial. It does sound like a cereal, doesn't it? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. It's like Oreos and tacos all together. Oh. Right? Well, I say that. I don't like Oreos, so. Maybe. An, oh, well. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah. Oreo taco. Let down. Sounds delicious to me. Besides that, I, I haven't got much done with that, but I did. I am almost done with another short. My last short did very well. I got over 570 views on it. This was the second short that I put out. My first one had over 250 views, so. Jimbo becoming internet famous. On shorts. I thing is, I fail so much when I record, and I get a lot of this footage, and I feel like my comic craft footage is so forgotten about. You know, especially you have to, you know, watch the whole episode to really get to some parts I, I find entertaining mm-hmm. that, you know, a lot of people don't get to because the quality isn't very good. It's one of my first, you know, videos I've made. And uh, I put together shorts of just these fails from early on from doing YouTube. And I want to continue that. Just go along the episodes, find a, you know good parts at some good fails, and put shorts together about it. Get some content out of stuff that you know I didn't. It, it wasn't very, doing very well, I guess. And uh, yeah, I'm actually 10 subscribers away from 500. So I'm hoping to get there. Nice. Let's push Jimbo over 500, guys. Come on. Yeah, I I appreciate it, but uh, you know I got the tutorial, the short episode out today, so you know I've I've been busy doing this stuff, and that is it for my week. Nice. Let's hop into some news because we do have a little bit of news. Let's start with Goat Horn because that's something we've talked about before. Goat Horn is finally in Java. Mm-hmm. I want to say Winter had plans on bringing it to Ripple Effect. Also, like I want to say we have the just the regular Goat Horn already in Win in the Ripple Effect. Right. I don't know how to get it. If it's the same, like, you need a goat to start banging its head on things. 
on the ripple effect yeah he has them for sale oh okay yeah he made them and put them for sale they're not very expensive but it's i mean there's there's really not much to it you know yeah you just make some noises yeah that's pretty much it well there are more noises to be made now Mm -hmm. we've talked about this there's eight goat horn variants four of them are exclusive to screaming goats i like the fact that a certain goat has its own sound right you can actually farm a sound you know it's not a random drop so i i I guess i got mixed feelings about it because you know one goat could give you all the sounds eventually Mm -hmm. but then again you know if you want a certain sound you can get more of that yeah the only thing is like it doesn't have much of a purpose right and i get everything doesn't have to have a purpose especially in minecraft the ultimate sandbox game but little things would be cool like music discs making the parents uh parrots dance like if i blow a goat horn around goats maybe they come a little bit closer to me or maybe parrots dance Mm -hmm. Uh, stuff like that would be cool yeah a little bit more function yeah i think would be a lot more fun it doesn't have to be over the top game breaking changes just something cool hidden Mm -hmm. that'd be nice like playing the goat horn around something will cause something to happen that could be small but it'd be nice to know it's there now it's been a while since we talked about the goat horn but isn't it like if you crouch it makes a deeper noise or you're looking down or up something like that yeah and if you look up it's a higher pitch noise yeah so there it's really unique actually i mean with all the different kinds it really is and then you have like the copper variant right i think the copper variant is the one that you can crouch down and look up yeah probably i think a regular goat horn just plays a regular goat horn noise yeah, there's nothing really like that. Yeah. So maybe that's all there is. You know, we could give it a little more functionality, but it already has a good bit of uniqueness, I guess the word would be. Yeah. I don't, I, I like the Gohorn as it is. Like, it's, I can see it being fun to mess with people with, but as of right now, that's all it's for. Yeah. What you think is sensitive as the Warden is, it would have something to do with that. You know, it could, I think you mentioned give it like a stun. Yeah, that would be cool. Because it's not so much of, I mean, it's a horn. It's loud, but it also creates vibration. The Warden is not my favorite thing in the world right now. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Uh, Let's go over some changes. So they say the LA connecting with note blocks is better with a visualized uh, vibration particle. Uh, From all the videos I'm seeing, the particle looks the same. Maybe it appears more often. Yeah, I don't know. And it also says can now be blocked by wool. Now, on the videos I saw, this didn't happen. But then again, I didn't see someone place wool on every side of the note block. Oh, okay. They just place wool, like, on the top or on the side. And so, like, so he's not blocking it. It's like, well, put it on all the sides, man. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't notice that either. Usually they try to put it on top, which stops the noise. Right. Doesn't mean it's not triggered. Yeah. That being said, like, the LA's uh, collecting ability, I know a lot of people are wanting to make auto sorters out of this. I don't see it very well. Like, their tossing's better, but you still have to make, like, a big hopper loop to collect everything. Right. You might as well put it in there yourself, right? Yeah. Or water streams are just as good. Now, I like the LA, and I will get an LA, and he will be my little buddy. And we will travel the world together. But nice. yeah, using them to go get stuff and move stuff back and forth for you, to me, that mechanic just seems like it's not quite there yet. So, yeah. Yeah, like you said, it, it's a really cool looking mob. They are adorable looking. It's like having a little Vex around. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like their sound effects. Their sound effects are really cool. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a mystical mm-hmm. creature. Yeah. Which I'm, I always enjoy. Yeah, you're right. You know, using it in sorters, I feel like it'd be way easier and uh, possibly less lag friendly, you know, without them. Yeah, I don't know how much their AI contributes to lag. Yeah, right. But I'm sure if there's like 20 of them in your sorter, that can't be good. Right. And I'm sure if you want to make a sorter, you're going to need more than that. (laughs) Yeah. Think about all the items in the game because they can only pick up one item at a time. Well, not one item at a time. You get one kind of item at a time. Yeah, um, non-stackable items I could see, you know, helping with storage. 
but even then, you know, there's a good bit of those. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I, I think the biggest draw will be like having a little companion to follow you around. Though you run into the thing where you have to give them an item to keep them close by. Right. I'll probably give mine a cookie or something. Or a totem. I guess the totem works. Oh, yeah. Totem would be cool. Mm-hmm. And then whenever I need it to actually, like, if I'm digging up a bunch of sand, because sand is one of those things where, like, I just go in a straight line as fast as I can, and then I walk back and pick up all the sand that gets left behind. Mm-hmm. Having them pick up the sand while I'm doing that is actually rather useful because it's a big open area. They're going to easily find me. We're not going to get stuck on stuff. Yep. That's the first thing I thought of. Yep. When I saw the mechanics of it was if I'm out resource gathering, mm-hmm. he could help me pick up these items that I'm missing. Because, you know, sand does get, they fall into cracks and crevices you don't even notice, and you lose blocks that way. But, uh, yeah, and it saves you time mm-hmm. going back and grabbing that stuff. Yes. So, yeah, I see the LA as a pet. It's basically a dog with more features. It'd be fun if I can put him in a shulker box. <laughs> and when I get there, I open my shulker box and he comes out. You want a Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much a Pokemon in that case. <laughs> no, you can't put the LA in a box. Go, LA. I choose you. Oh. Get sand attack. Do not put an LA in a box. That'd be fun. Of course, now all I can think of is the Rick and Morty Mr. Meeseeks. Oh, oh no. You want a Mr. Meeseeks. That's what you want. Companion in a box. I'm just thinking of ways that where this thing ain't going to just wander off on you yeah that will if you give it an item they stay near you right so that's the big thing is make sure you kind of have like a default item you could give it and that's why i mentioned a cookie and you totem would actually be a better one in case it gets hit accidentally and dies Mm -hmm. i would assume a totem could revive it yeah well uh, i did see where you know it did die with the totem and it was able to come back there we go that's cool that's actually really cool i like that Mm mm-hmm it keeps the lore of the totem real. Right. And it's not just player-based. It's everything-based. Anything holding this will come back to life. And if that's a bug, keep it. Yes. Make that a feature, because that's pretty cool. If I can somehow get the Ender Dragon to hold a totem when I strike it and kill it, it needs to come back. Mm-hmm. Right. No exception. Not even the dragon. <laughs> no exceptions. Uh, Let's take a look at... Updated brewing stands, base, UVs, and texture to match graphical fix and bedrock. Okay, so I guess there's just a texture change for brewing stands. Yeah, I didn't really notice. Yeah. I, I, no one went over that in the uh, the videos I watched. One of the big things that happened, though, was explosions caused by player-ignited TNT will now cause experience drops from broken blocks. Mm-hmm. So if you break coal or diamonds or stuff like that, well, and Skulk, because Skulk's now a XP bank as it is. Yep, it's a big one. That's a big one. It didn't say mobs, though. If I blow up some mobs, XP, does it, does it already drop XP if you blow up mobs? I think it does. I would assume so. I've never tried it. I know if you light TNT around a zombie pigman, it'll aggro all the pigment. So I think, it, well, if you kill it in one shot, but if it takes damage and it gets aggro, yeah, you'll... You know, aggro all the pigmen, the zombie pigmen. Yeah. Wire guy mentioned there could be an exception. So the guys during the raids that drop the totems. Mm hmm. Saw that. My excuse is they're not holding the totem, it's in their pocket. It's in the inventory. Yep. That's different. They had it out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They shouldn't die. Uh huh. Can't be hiding stuff in your pockets and expect it to work. I like TNT causing XP drops. That's a good idea. Mm hmm. Now, there's TNT dupers. Yes. I didn't look and see if that did the same thing. Because you're not technically lighting this thing. It's lighting itself. I believe it does. It still works. I was talking to someone. I can't remember who it was. May have been Omni. May have been Casey. May have been some of the guys at Channel 64. I'm not sure. But because that first TNT is technically being ignited by you. Right. Okay. So all the following or subsequent TNT is also you. It's like linked. Yeah. All right. Warden balancing. Oh, boy. Oh, the warden. Yeah. More warden stuff. So their range attack now bypasses shields and armor. And armor? And armor. 
Huh. They lowered it from 10 damage or from 30 damage to 10 damage. Okay. But they also reduced the cooldown from 5 seconds to 2 seconds. It's a lot of balancing they did. Yeah, and it doesn't feel much, <laughs> much balance to me. It's like, yes, it takes more hits to kill you, but it's now going to produce more hits faster. Yeah. So instead of one big attack, it's going to get you three small attacks. Well, you see the damage is when goes down a third. Mm-hmm. But the uh, cooldown is a less than a third, or more than a third. It's like two times faster, or over two times faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not quite a third, but so they give it. They they give you just a little bit more. Yeah, and this is where I go. I really like the idea of putting banners on shields, since banners are made out of wool, as a way to deflect this attack. Oh yeah. Yeah, just a regular shield wouldn't do it. Gotta have a banner on it. I like that. And the only reason I bring this up, I know the the warden's not to be fought, but the warden is faster than you. You cannot hide from the warden. You cannot pillar away from the warden. So basically summoning the warden accidentally is a death sentence. Yeah. That feels unfair. Now they do, they did give us a drop for the warden. <laughs> yes, we get we get one skull catalyst on drop. Right. Which is fine. I was fine with the word not dropping anything because of how they were designing it. My only thing is there's no counter punch. Even if it's not, like, I get the purpose is not to defeat the warden. Well, giving me something to stop the warden from killing me is not defeating the warden, if that makes sense. Hmm. Like, just give me something to allow me a chance to run away if I accidentally summon the warden. Yeah. That's my big thing. As someone who stinks at any kind of PvE and PvP, me spawning a warden will will kill me. Yeah, and if you're not supposed to kill it, I could see, you know, either you standing in one spot until this thing goes away, or, you know, you're trying to weasel your way around it. Well, you can't stand in one spot, because it can smell you. It'll find you and kill you because it can smell you. Right. And then, you know, you're trying to get away from it and possibly summoning more of these suckers in, you know. So you you got like five wardens you got to get around. So, I mean, killing it, killing it is an option. You know, that's one way to get it out of there. It doesn't doesn't drop XP, though, right? As far as I know, no XP. Yeah, just the catalyst. So it seems like the strategy is to just go down there with a ton of wool and quietly walk around and covering all the sensors with wool so it can't spawn. Or just a bunch of chicken eggs. Just start spamming chicken eggs everywhere. That's true. I forgot about the chicken eggs and the snowballs. There was a... Someone gave an example about iron golems. And they were, I think, six of them, maybe? Maybe a little more were able to handle a warden. Iron golems are quickly becoming fashionable in minecraft again Mm -hmm. for a while there they were only good to farm iron and now they're really becoming defense mechanisms again and i i love it Mm -hmm. i love that we've we've had this mob for so long and now uses for it are coming back around yeah it's going to be rough to build the golem in the ancient city yes because you might spawn a warden while you're doing that but i could see you making a platform above the city and just dropping them down in there. They don't take fall damage, so yeah. it's like an airdrop, airdrop golems. Casey, I know I said becoming wrong. My nose is stopped up. I can't breathe. Yep, you said becoming. <laughs> you didn't think we were going to let you get away with that, did you? No. <laughs> but no, being able to not defend against the warden, I forgot about the throwing the snowballs and chickens, but I still think the idea of a shield to deflect a sonic boom would be nice. But it needs to be a bannered shield, not a wooden shield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes way more sense. Right. It brings back banner shield. Like, I've used a shield all season. I don't have a banner on my shield. Mm-hmm. I haven't used a shield at all, really. And that would make me use one. Mm-hmm. I did see a, a video of someone fighting the warden, and they were able to pillar up two blocks, and the warden couldn't get them. What? Now, they could use the range attack, but 
it was the knockback wasn't as intense. I think it's because they had netherite armor, mm-hmm. and uh, it wasn't knocking them off this pillar. You know, they would shift and stay on this pillar, and they were able to handle this warden fairly easy. So, yeah, I think I don't know that the melee range for the warden should be a little bit more than the player in that case, because if you're able to cheese it like that, then that's you know too easy. It's way too easy. I have to send you the video if I can find it. Yeah. Yep. Pillared up two blocks, and the warden's head is like right next to him, and it would not do any melee, but would do the sonic attack, and uh, he'd stay on that pillar, didn't get knocked off, and you know just keep swinging. I was like, huh. Well, we all know the the second the warden gets its finalized version, within an hour, someone will have a way to cheese it. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Big community in Minecraft. Yeah. The the community in Minecraft is just insane, and they'll know how to do it. It's funny, you think, like, well, it's not rocket science. No, some of the stuff is, like, rocket science, <laughs> what they come up with. Yeah. Minecraft community. Uh, but I think that's all I got for the news. Should we move on? Yeah. Um, no listener comments this week, at least none that I found. There was a lot of talk about, oh, weird suggestions we had early in the podcast life, which I don't think we're that weird, but... We're a little weird, but... I mean, we're weird in general, but... Oh, the suggestions. Yeah. Is it the the comment about, you know, being out of the Minecraft realm? Yeah. Yeah. There's always an argument with that because a lot of things we see come in, people argue that this isn't Minecraft enough. You know, like when the lights are come in. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, so I don't know. Game's meant to be adjusted a little bit, but I think they do a good job of keeping it Minecraft like the developers. Maybe not us. Maybe we go out a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I think definitely recently we've made sure to stay close to Minecraft. I agree. Uh, but yeah, guys, you should definitely join our Discord to leave some listener comments. Just take C3PO's word for it. Hello, interwebs. I'm C3PO, a member of the Withering Effect Discord, a great place to talk to fellow like minded Minecrafters and to get to know the people from the show. Sometimes. There are even puppy pictures. Don't delay. Join the Discord today. Link is in the show notes. Toodaloo! Dud's made me say that. Thank you for the Discord ad, C3PO. And speaking of the Discord, it's the only place you can get involved in our mending Minecraft vote. This week, we asked you to choose between one of three mobs for us to discuss and improve. Your choices were the Drowned, Librarian, and Stray. And the winner of Mending Minecraft this week is... Stray. Could see that one coming a mile away. Yeah. Check out these votes. The Drowned had four, Librarian four, Stray 40. Yeah. It's pretty strange. No one wanted to hear about the drown, especially the librarian. I saw some comments of why would they put librarian in there? I could see, I could see a little bit improvement. But we're going to talk about the stray. And before we start, I got a few things here. Strays are variants of skeletons that spawn only in frozen, ice, and snowy biomes. Strays have ten hearts of health and deal up to two and a half hearts of damage. They are also known for using slowness arrows that slow the player down for 30 seconds and also drop arrows of slowness when killed by a player or tamed wolf. Strays themselves are not immune to slowness inflicted on them. can't believe I couldn't read that. When a skeleton is kept inside powder snow for 7 seconds, it converts into a stray, and strays don't take damage from freezing in powdered snow. That's, that was a good, that's a good change. Mm. They actually had it to where they took damage, and I'm like, why? Yeah. Can strays walk on top of powdered snow? I don't know. I don't think they can. I think they sink like everything else. Yeah, which uh, that'd be a good fix to start with. Yeah, it all depends on how you want to go with it, because skeletons sink in water, right? They don't swim. Right. So it would make sense that strays would sink in powdered snow, but that could be a cool advantage of the stray, is that it could walk on the powdered snow. So now you don't know that that's powdered snow. Mm -hmm. So you go running to kill the stray and you fall into powdered snow. And they could give it a cool animation. When you're a skeleton and you convert and you're inside the block, it gets like a little, you know, like 
digs itself out or yeah you know pulls itself out of the snow kind of like how a warden comes out of the ground it could give it some kind of animation like that that would be cool instead of the uh pop animation we see all the time with like mobs leaving mine carts and stuff like that right yeah like how freaky would it be skeletons coming at you and you're laughing at him because he's freezing yeah. he turns into a stray and like turns the tides and comes crawling out of the snow you're like oh crap mm-hmm. that'd be cool to see yeah one of the other things i thought was strays should drop ice okay yeah i mean they already drop arrows is it slowness arrows yes yes so dropping ice could be cool too now stray farms are not the most efficient way to get supplies but they have been done so if you want to like farm bones arrows and ice i could see you choosing a stray farm over an ice farm and a skeleton farm Mm -hmm. not the most efficient thing in the world but it kind of works yeah i do like the fact that they have like more of a echoey sound effect it's kind of similar to the skeleton Mm -hmm. but they got their own sound yeah I thought that was a good touch. Aren't they taller, too? Uh, maybe. Or is it just the husk I'm thinking of that's taller? Can't, I know they have, like, a their skin animation. They have, like, a hood on. Mm-hmm. Like a withered-looking hood. So that might give them a little bit more height. I imagine it would. I did have an idea for a group of strays acting like a raid. And I don't know what would set it off or what would happened but like i just pictured a group of strays roaming like a pillager patrol except like they freeze the water they're near drop little pieces of snow how about their own spiders like jockeys could be but i thought that would be like super creepy just having these groups of strays patrolling around yeah it would be fun to see there are a good bit in the snowy biome there are chances that skeletons spawn too. I think it's like 80% chance it's a stray. So there are a good bit of them. Well, I'm talking like patrolling, not just in snowy biomes. Like you're at your base and you see a frozen piece of water that's turned to ice and a couple layers of snow powder, whatever. Okay. So you know a group of strays were there, but you don't know where they are. Yeah, the fact that they have hoods on could give them they could give them that ability of when they you know, they come out in the day. Mm-hmm. That could be possible. But that's all I had. Yeah, I didn't really check and see if there was much in the Discord. Strays are like, they're very cool looking mobs that we don't really run into a lot. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of those biomes. Some don't seem too often. Right. I remember the first time I saw a stray and I'm like, what is this thing? I had no idea. I thought it was a skeleton. Well, it kind of is. Yeah, I was real confused. Yeah, uh, Casey is up on a snowy mountain. We should ask him if he runs into them much. Yeah, I wonder if it's a mountain thing too. Yeah. I'm sure Carl has a lot of strays around. Carl's base is in the nether. Right. (laughs) Uh, Casey, who is listening live, part of the patron benefits, says he has not seen any strays. So yeah, he lives in the mountain. There's snow there, Mm -hmm. but it might not be like snowy mountain. It might just be mountain. Yeah, it doesn't count as that kind of biome, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think it's just elevation gives it the snow, not the biome. Yeah. Should we move into our topic? Uh, Sure. So, yeah, this topic is, uh, where the heck is this stuff? It's a good title. (laughs) That's my working title, where the heck is this stuff? (laughs) We were shown some concept art of birch forests. We haven't seen any of that in any of the snapshots. Right. I was just like... I was looking for, especially considering mangrove swamp, something I didn't think I would look forward to is the thing I'm looking forward to the most right now. I would really like to see what was going on with the birch forests. Yep. And because they gave us that birch forest uh, fan art or concept art, I won the mob vote or the mm-hmm. Minecraft update vote. And uh, I, it's hard to accept that if they're only going to update one biome. You know, we, we figured. Because they gave us, you know, the art for the birch forest and the the mangrove swamp, there would even be more. Yeah. You know, that are hidden. But they're not even giving us the two. I guess we're probably going to get three to four. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking, like, full big blown changes. But, like, the mangrove swamp, 
would be the big biome change. And then you get little changes to birch, maybe savanna, maybe desert, just little things. But we haven't gotten anything. Now, we saw a picture of what, what, ducks at one point. Yeah, but I don't think that was part of anything. Yeah. I'd like it to have been. Mm-hmm. Could be in the future, but I think it was a developer that posted that. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's about it. Not much more. And it was outside the Birch Forest. So I'm thinking this might be yeah. you know, the time where they released Birch Forest stuff, but not quite. Yeah, I, don't, I just want more information. If we're not getting it, tell us. But at the same time, that would be a huge letdown. Like, where are the fireflies? Mm-hmm. I get getting rid of the the fireflies feeding the frogs kind of thing because I knew it was going to be really hard to create fireflies that were interactable like that because I figured the fireflies being as small as they are, they needed to just be pixel animations, kind of like how we have the spore blossom. Right. All those little pixels floating around. I figured that's what we'd see with fireflies. So you wouldn't really interact with it. They would just kind of be there. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard a darn thing about fireflies since like the second week of snapshots. Yeah. I don't even think, are they in bedrock yet? They're not in anything. Right. I want me some fireflies. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it'd be nice to know. Yeah. Like we had archaeology. Everyone was ready for archaeology, excited about it. I mean, not everyone was excited about it, Mm -hmm. but, uh. Yeah, at least they let us know. Hey, guys, this isn't coming out right away. Yeah, that's on the back burner. Yep, putting it on the back burner. Which also brings me to the combat update. Jeb, a couple years ago, was working on the combat update. I was extremely excited to see how that was going. And then we stopped hearing about it for a long time. And then we heard Ulrif had taken over, and now he was doing the combat update. But that's the only information we have. We haven't gotten anything else. Yeah, and you think because... They kind of, you know, they're letting us know about this combat update. I don't think it's going to be its own update. You know, it might be sprinkled in with another update. That's what I thought at first, but who knows now? Yeah, usually it's a surprise, and it wouldn't be much of a surprise if it like combat update. Like, oh, okay, you know, we knew it was coming, but I could see it being a part of another. I could see an inventory slash combat update comboed. I think that would be really nice. I don't know. I'm expecting something with the inventory. There's another one, bundles. You know, they kind of put that on the back burner. Yeah, bundles. I'm not expecting anything, anything anymore. <laughs> just kind of, you know, I'm just kind of along for the ride. But these are things like communication about them would be, would just be nice. So I don't, I don't get hopes up. Like fireflies were really high up on my list after uh, Minecon or was it Minecraft Live or Whatever it's called now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think people are starting to get worried that we're not going to get them. I have a feeling we're going to get them in a snapshot. Fireflies. Mm-hmm. You just think it's going to be one of the last ones. Yeah, I, I really don't know about Birch Forest. Yeah. All we got is concept art. They actually put the fireflies in the game and showed us how they work and everything. And uh, besides that, that's it. But yeah, we still have snapshots left. And again, I think people were getting worried we're not getting these because... Some of these past snapshots have been like bug fixes. And normally that means, hey, this update's coming, you know. So, but even in pre-releases, they'll sometimes give us uh, something new. I wouldn't even say because we're getting bug fixes, that means it's coming. Because we've, the pattern I've seen is like, okay, here's a snapshot with a bunch of stuff. Then it's bug fix, bug fix, bug fix. Here's a couple things. Bug fix, bug fix, bug fix. Here's a couple things. Yeah. I know I know. one had a lot of bug fixes in it, and people were speculating, Right, hey, it's coming soon. Well, and they did say summer of this year was the release, and it's May 1st. Summer officially starts, was it May 21st? Uh, it's in June 21st. June 21st, I'm sorry. I was guessing around the beginning of July was when it was going to get released, just kind of like a rough guess. Yeah. Not a lot of time, and I know they, they're going to want to do pre-releases at least a month of those Mm -hmm. we are saying where is this and this but there is a lot of stuff being added to this update Mm -hmm. so there's going to be wanting a lot of tests yeah it's funny how we don't get these things you know that we're expecting 
but they're throwing stuff at us left and right. Like, yeah. you know, the new disc, the uh, the new compass, you know, things that we didn't know about. Echo shards. I, st- I still am holding out hope that echo shards are going to do more than just create a compass. Yeah. Because if that's all it's good for, I would have rather just had the compass as the loot. Mm-hmm. And what's good about playing Java is you get your cords. Yeah. You know, so you don't necessarily need it if you just look at your cords before you exit that death screen. Can you access the F3 screen after you've died? I think so. I don't think you can. I've never done it. You might not be able to. I don't think I've ever tried either. I know a lot of people now that, yeah, Casey's saying you cannot. Oh, so you got to have it. You got to be prepped. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people now who play with the mini HUD data pack, which gives you your cords all the time. Mm. So if you die, your your cords are still going to be on the screen. Yeah. I know if you have it up and you die, it's still there, but you can't access it. Turn it on or off. Why are guys saying Bedrock shows cords all the time? I didn't know that. Yeah, I think you have to turn it on. Yeah, but but see, that turns off the advancements, so doesn't it? I don't know. I know a lot of people, it does not turn off the advancements. Oh, I know a lot of people are big on advancement chasing. To me, once you've done it once, it's like, okay, whatever. But some people really enjoy that, so I could see where if something affects that, they're not liking it. But Wire Guy says, no, it does not, turning that on does not affect the advancements. So at that point, it's like, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, the compass is cool. It, to me, the compass was made for the average Minecraft player. The the casual kind of come on, play a little bit. They're not really getting into technical Minecraft, stuff like that. And I could see where those types of players would really, really like it and stuff. But guys like me and Jimbo, who are technical players, who will have trading halls that can replace everything we've lost in like 30 minutes, it's almost not even worth it. Yeah, definitely. Also depends on you know where you're at. Yeah, that too. Like I, I always try to get my stuff back. Mm-hmm. But if I'm out in the end, end busting, and I die, mm-hmm. yeah, it's gone. <laughs> I I attempt it, but odds are you're not gonna find it. I won't attempt it because whenever I'm getting like shulker boxes and stuff, I immediately put that in my ender chest. So me dying is just losing my gear. Yeah, and I can replace that with villagers. I don't know. I, I still try, I think. I make an attempt. That's probably where I would use it, the compass the most, is in the end. I'd like a compass that could help find other players. That would be really cool. Yeah. I don't know how you would do it, or even if you could do it, but the ability to find other players would be nice. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'd have to, I don't know, you'd have to set it up somehow, like right-click on the player. <laughs> yeah. You gotta bop them with the compass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's a lot of games you play where you got to find other players Mm -hmm. on there. I was going to say, you could have this ginormous game of hide-and-seek. It wouldn't make it worth playing, though, if you knew where they were. Well, the compass would get you in the area, but you could hide vertically so different nowadays. Uh, Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. Like, you got the world. Oh, yeah, the entire world. To find players. Okay, I'm thinking of, like, a mini-game area. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, the compass would be cheaty for a minigame. Mm-hmm. But an entire world? <sighs> yeah, that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. But we're not expecting that. <laughs> yeah. At least as of right now. But fireflies, where's our fireflies? That's all we want to know. Yeah, give me some fireflies. At least give me some information on my on my bug friends. Mm-hmm. I think we were talking about, you know, we should be able to bottle them up, use them as a light source. I know, right? Could you imagine a bottle of fireflies giving off a seven light source? That'd be so nice. Mm-hmm. And I could see it like a, almost like a pulsing, flickering. Right. It would act like a candle. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, so good. I want it. Yeah, we need fireflies first. Yeah. Maybe that's why they're taking so long. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And being an ambient thing, you know, could mm-hmm. cause lag. So yeah, to figure, you know, to smooth that out. I'm I'm okay with waiting. Yeah. But I think that's going to do it today, guys. Uh, Carl is under the weather. So on top of all the work he's been having to do with guest recordings, we had two guests, or well, four guests, back to back. So he's been overwhelmed with that. We're going to keep this episode a bit short so he doesn't feel even more stressed out doing this stuff. And Carl, if you need me to edit some stuff to help you catch up, I will be willing to help you edit. 
I know you say my editing sucks, but there we go. <laughs> I do want to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons who are supporting our show. Our milk level patrons are Arrington, Obni, Croc, Fragile Rock, Casey Plays Games, Obeep, and Vipress, Tuna, and Wire Guy. If you too would like to get access to exclusive benefits and hours of extra content each month, please consider joining at patreon.com slash the withering effect. And if you like the show, you can share it with all of your friends and on social media. If you listen on Spotify, rate and follow us so you never miss a future episode. Or if you listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. Doing any of these really helps the show reach more listeners. If you'd like to get in contact with us, send an email to podcast at thewitheringeffect.com. Tweet us, leave a voice message, or join our Discord where you can have a chat with everyone who works on the show and fellow listeners. All the links are in the show notes. This show has been brought to you by Jimbo and myself, but also our digital producer, Carl. He helps make sure the show ends up where it should be. And the amazing music you hear in the intro and outro is created by the one and only Decoy. Everyone's social media info can be found in the show notes. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for getting with us. You should probably go drink your milk now. Bye. See you guys.